Hi guys, welcome back to another Projection 3D video tutorial. Today we will dwell deep into creating this very cool and dark animation of a gloomy town. It's an advanced level tutorial and because it's pretty long, I suggest you get yourselves comfortable and get ready. Okay, so let's start. So first things first, I'm gonna drag this image to the timeline and then I'm gonna find camera. All right, now let's match it. As you know from the previous tutorials, before creating projection, we should properly match the camera with the image. Let's unhide and adjust helper grid. Add the right side. Make sure that the grid lines match with the image lines. Okay, that looks pretty even. And now I'm gonna hide the grid, select image and camera and create projection. Click pre-compose and then I'll make five projection copies. Let's go to projection scene five. Let's create a ground plane. So uncheck the grid, except for the bottom side and click okay. Scale it a little bit. Okay, good. Now we can do the houses. I think we should start from the left side. So let's generate position for the nearest one. All right, now the second one. Okay, cool. Now I should select both position controllers and then generate plane from points from the tools menu. Okay, I will now draw a mask to prepare the facade of the house. All right, that's done. Now I should make a protruding wall. But first, let's create a ledge. I'll generate a position and then I'm gonna create a plane on that position. So I'll copy the wall's orientation and then I'll paste it on the plane. Good, now that we have the right orientation, we need to rotate the plane exactly 90 degrees and then draw a mask in the form of the ledge. Great, now we can generate position for the protruding wall. So that we can create a plane on that position. So copy the wall orientation and paste it on the plane just like we did before. And then just mask it. Okay, well done. We now have a protruding wall. Now let's go ahead and generate the position for the front side of the roof. Create a plane on that position, then copy the facade orientation and then paste it on it. Let's move it a little along the x-axis to cover the roof. Okay, fine. Now I only have to draw a mask over it. Great, that's done. And now let's create a connecting ledge. For this, I'll generate a position and create a plane. I don't want to make it complicated, so I'll just copy the facade orientation. I'll open Anchor Point Editor. And I'm going to rotate the plane 90 degrees. 
Now check reposition only anchor point option and move the anchor point to the bottom left corner. As you can see, the plane moved, but the previously generated position remained. So let's draw a mask in the form of a ledge. For better results, let's increase shadow map resolution. Keep on masking. Okay, that's taken care of. Okay, let's continue. Select front part of the roof and generate position for the connecting ledge. Then create a plane on that position. Then copy orientation of the front part of the roof and paste it on the plane you created. Then move anchor point to the bottom right corner. And rotate the plane over the x-axis. Now we should set the plane to the right size. Like so. It should try and make orientation as precise as possible. Great, that's perfect. Now let's just draw a mask. Alright, that's done. And now let's just create a roof. Select the front part of the roof and generate position for the side of it. Create a plane on that position. Copy the front part orientation and then paste it on the plane. Then press R and rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, great. Now move anchor point to the bottom left corner. Looks like we should reduce the plane and tilt it. Scale it a little bit to cover the entire roof. All right, and so now I'm just gonna mask it and that's it. Cool, the side is ready. Now we can create another one. Select this and generate position. Create a plane. Copy orientation of this layer and paste it on the plane. Move anchor point to the bottom left corner. Then rotate the plane 90 degrees. All right, guys, now we should reduce and tilt the plane just like we did before. Great job. Now comes masking. Great, that's it. All right, it seems like we're done with this part. Although wait, we forgot about the doorway. Let's do that. We need to draw a mask to extrude. So select the mask and open extrude tool. Set depth size to minus 300 and click create surface. Great, awesome. Now let's organize those objects we've created. Move down the doorway layer. Let's see how it looks. To see the doorway, we must change mask mode to subtract. See, now it's all right. Okay, so let's group those objects. Let's check again. Yes, it's done. 
Okay guys, now I want to animate the camera to see that objects are moving properly. So I'll add keys on the position and then I'll move forward using camera tool. Cool. Now let's pre-render. As you can see, everything moves in the right manner. So that's all good. Great, now let's proceed. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a second house and a water well. But first we must prepare the ground for that house. So as usual, I'll generate position and create a plane. And then I'll rotate it 90 degrees. And move anchor point to the top middle corner. Okay, now we must raise the surface. Like this. Then mask it. Well done. Now we can extrude and then it will be ready. So select the mask and open extrude tool. Set depth size to a hundred and click create surface. That's great. Now let's have a look at it from the custom view. It all seems okay. Everything is in the right place. Now we can generate the position for the house. Remember guys, you should always create things that will help you generate positions for other objects. Which is why we created a sublime ground first. That is to generate the position of the house because the house is actually slightly higher than the main ground. Alright, so let's generate another position and create a plane. Now let's just rotate it a little bit. Let's have a look at it from custom view. Okay, everything seems to be fine. Should move it to the right so that it covers the entire house. Okay, now I'll just draw a mask to finish the wall. This place also needs to be masked. Click MM to open Mask menu and select Mask 2 and 3 and then change mode to Subtract. Okay, let's see how it looks now. Looks good. Right, let's make a roof. To make a roof, generate position and create a plane. Copy wall orientation and paste it on the plane. Then tilt it. Okay, let's see. That's all good and well, but still needs a little bit of adjustment. Great, now we can mask it. All right, so we just did our roof. Now let's recheck that real quick. Yes, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. All good. Now we can finally generate position for the dome. Copy house orientation and paste it to the plane you created, just like you did before. And then draw a mask over the dome.
Okay, we did it. Now let's switch masks 2, 3 and 4 to subtract mode. Let's have a look. Good, looks great. Alright, now let's make that well. So I'll go ahead and generate position and I'll create a primitive cylinder. Well, obviously we should adjust the cylinder so that it, you know, covers the entire well. Okay, that's perfect. Now we'll create a helper layer at the top of the well to generate position using generate plane from bounding box option. The helper layer was actually created in the wrong orientation, but that's nothing to fear. You just set Y axis rotation to zero. Now we can generate position. And then the second one. Select both position points and create a plane using generate plane from points. Okay, now draw a mask. Done. Now change all masks to subtract mode except for the first one. Perfect. Now let's create a fence. But first generate position for this lonely stick here. Then create and mask a plane. Great, that's all taken care of. Now the fence. Change anchor point to the bottom left corner. And now we should rotate the plane to set it to the right place. You can really see it better from custom view. Okay, that seems to be right. Now we just draw a mask. Okay, great. We did that and it's all fine. So what else is there? All right, let's make a barrel. As usual, we'll start with a plane. Remove anchor point to the bottom middle corner and then reduce the plane. and also rotate it. Now, as you probably already figured, we need to draw a mask now. You can also mask this stick with the barrel because they're in the same position. Okay guys, it seems like this part is also complete, so let's tidy up a little bit. Now we don't really need this helper layer anymore, so let's get rid of that. Okay, now select all objects except for the barrel and group them together. Now let's see the result. 
That's perfect. So let's move on to the right side of the street. All right, what do we have here? First, let's generate position points to find orientation of our house. The second one will be here because the card is on the same position. Now select both and create a plane. Good, let's mask it. That's okay. Let's see. Should fix this area. Okay, cool. Now we can generate the sidewall position. Now it may seem like the plane has the right orientation, but this is actually not the case. We still need to copy the orientation and paste it over to the plane. And only after that, turning it 90 degrees, we get the proper orientation. All right, and so then we just draw a mask and the side wall will be complete. Okay, cool. Now let's create a ledge so that we can generate position of the upper wall that's protruding. Okay, so copy orientation, paste it, rotate plane 90 degrees, and draw a mask. Now we can generate position and create that protruding wall. Copy, paste, and it actually looks like we still need to rotate it a little bit. Now draw a mask. Okay, that's finished. Let's get to our roof. Generate position at the point where the wall meets the roof. Create a plane on that point. And don't forget about orientation. Move anchor point, like so, and also move plane to the left. Okay, now tilt it. Perfect, now we can draw a mask and get the part of the roof. And it's done. Okay, let's now move on to the sidewall. It looks like we need to fix the mask a little bit. Good. Now generate position. Create a plane. Copy orientation. No, not this. This one. Rotate 90 degrees. And draw a mask. 
Good. Now for the other side. Just duplicate this layer, uncheck reposition anchor point and change anchor point position. Like this. Now rotate it so that it covers the other side of the roof. Delete the old mask and draw a new one. Let's have a look at it from the custom view. See, it's in the right place. We can now mask it. Great, we did it. Okay, now let's get to that massive bulk with a hanging creepy corpse on it. Let's get right into it and generate a position. Create a plane. Copy orientation. Paste it on the plane. Rotate 90 degrees. And then we can draw the mask. Okay, well done. Now let's organize those objects. All right, guys, let's do the nearest house. Generate a position, create a plane on that position. Copy layers orientation and paste it to the plane. And then draw a mask. Cool, just what we wanted. Now we need to generate position for the ledge. Create a plane. Give it the proper orientation. Mask it. That's perfect. We can now generate position for the protruding wall. Create a plane. Copy this layer's orientation. Paste it on the plane. Then draw a mask. Well done, guys. We did a great job. So let's see what else needs movement. So I think we need to create the back wheel of the card. Because if we don't, it will deform during animation. So let's do it. Copy cart's orientation, paste it on the plane, and mask it. Good. All right, guys, looks like we've finished this area. So now let's organize our project because it's a little bit messy at the moment. Select parts of the nearest house and group them together. We don't need other parts at this point because we need those in different compositions. Okay, so let's pre-render and see what we have.
Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Right, so let's proceed. So let's duplicate this layer and move it on top of other layers. Delete all mask. Mark reposition anchor point option and move anchor point to the bottom right corner. As you can see, we've created the back wall of the house pretty quickly. We just need to fix it a little bit. All right, so draw a mask for that wall. Great, it's done. Now generate position for that ledge. Create a plane and give it the proper orientation. And then draw a mask. Okay, now generate position for the protruding wall. Now it looks like here we must fix the plane orientation manually. Okay, great. Now we can mask and finish it. All right, let's make that roof. Create a plane. Copy orientation of this layer and paste it on that plane. Good. Now move it back. Orient it properly. Tilt it. Well done. We can mask it now. Now let's get to that back side of the roof. All right, so just mask it. Cool, that's all taken care of. Now what? Ah oh yes, let's do the doorstep. So we need to copy orientation. Now we should tilt it. And then mask it. And it's ready. Okay guys, let's move on to the houses that are in the back. Generate position, create a plane. Adjust it. Look at the lines. And draw a mask.
and it's all ready. Easy as that. Okay, now I think we can finally get to those sticks. So select the bottom layer and generate position. Maybe just tilt it a little. And then put a mask over it. So guys, because this tutorial is quite long already, I'm not going to show you how I did all those sticks. I'm pretty sure you can do it yourselves. So you just select the bottom layer, I mean the ground plane, generate stick position, create a plane on that position and mask them. It's pretty easy. We did it all before. It's the same process. Just don't forget to select bottom layer every time before generating position for every other stick. In the end, you should get something like this. And don't forget to check on it from the custom view just to make sure it's all in the right place. Now select all the sticks on the right side and group them together. Also select all the sticks on the left side and group them as well. Well done! We've finished the foreground of our scene. Now let's move on to the background. Generate positions. Select position points and then generate plane from points. Okay, now move anchor point to the bottom left corner. Increase the plan over X axis. Now let's have a look at it from the custom view. Okay, it seems to be in the right place. Let's move it back a little. Great, now we can draw a mask. Good, that's done. So let's generate position for the roof. Uh, then I'm going to create a plane on that position and fix the plane position via the anchor point editor. Okay, so copy orientation of those houses and paste them on the plane. Rotate 90 degrees. That's it. Now tilt it. Maybe do a little bit of stretching. And we can mask it now. So now let's do the chimney position. Go ahead and create a plane on that position and mask it. All the usual stuff. Great. Well, I guess we can move forward and generate position for the roof of the second house. So do all the same steps you did before. Copy, paste, mask, now let's do the chimney. This one's ready too. Uh, 
Let's create a third one. Copy orientation, paste, rotate 90 degrees, then tilt it, and draw a mask. Okay, now the chimney. All right, done. Let's see. Great, we did a big job, you guys. Now, there's a side wall and we still need to finish that. So let's do it right away. Copy, paste. Move it a little over to the left. Then draw a mask. Now let's see. Everything seems to be okay, but the last roof doesn't seem to have the right angle. So let's fix that. Delete the mask, tilt it more, and then draw a new one. Now it's okay. All right, let's tidy up. Select all these layers and group them. I think this is great. Now let's generate position for those houses and the distance. Create a plane from position points. Adjust the plane via anchor point editor. Check it from the custom view. Yes, it's right where it needs to be. Okay, so I'll draw a mask. And it's done. Well done, guys. This part is complete. So let's have a look at what we did so far. Okay, we did the main part of the project and there isn't much left to do now actually, so let's just finish it up. Select the bottom layer and generate position for the distant house on the left side. Create a plane, adjust it, rotate it, scale so that it covers the entire house, Move it to the left. Now let's switch to custom view. Yes, everything is all right and we can mask it now. Good, now let's take care of the roof. Adjust and tilt it. 
Nice. Now I'll draw a mask. Now duplicate this side of the roof, delete the mask and tilt it back to create the other side of the roof. Okay, done. Now we can mask it. And now for the chimney. Awesome. Let's check out the custom view. Oh no, we forgot about the side wall. No worries though. I'll generate a position. And create a plane. Adjust it. Perfect. This house is complete. It looks like we're coming to the end of our modeling routine. Now let's just do those houses in the back real quick. So we'll do the masking. Okay, great. Okay, let's see what else we should do. The background, the tree, and a hanging corpse. So let's create a background. Scale it. Okay, let's check the result. It looks like houses are in the wrong place. They're too far away. We should bring them closer and fix the mask. Hit this eyeball to work faster. Okay, let's see. Perfect. We just need to create that tall house on the right. Let's do it. Okay, good. Let's check the result. Awesome. Now let's do that corpse. Find those protruding logs layer and generate position. Now click File, Import Image, and import the image of the corpse. Move anchor point and scale and adjust it.
I should fix that anchor point. Double click on the image and fix it. Now it's fine. You can also turn it a little if you want to. Okay, it's ready. So now let's finally do that tree and finish the modeling. So first, generate position of the tree. Head over to File, Import Image, and import that tree image. Double click that and reposition anchor point. Great, now scale and adjust it. So let's have a look from the custom view. We need to move it a little forward, set it between the two houses. All right, the modeling is now completed. Now let's just organize our project. But before we do that, let's go to custom view and check our result. Let's turn off the background layer to make it clearer. Check it out. It looks almost as real as a genuine street. The distance between the houses is very accurate and the scene just feels right. Now you should also get the pretty much the same result if you follow the steps and you should really check and then recheck everything you do just to be on the safe side. Okay now let's organize those objects. Open all projection scenes Great, now replace projection images in each composition. Select projection scene 1 and click replace projection image button. Choose Gloomy Town 1. Then Gloomy Town 2 for projection scene 2 and so on. Leave the last one for now. Okay, so move the first house to projection scene one. Actually, we forgot to do one thing at the very beginning. We forgot to increase shadow map resolution, so we should do it in each composition separately now. Great, now everything's fine, so let's continue. The barrel goes to projection scene 1. These two layers also go to projection scene 1. And also this group. Okay, let's continue. Oh, and those sticks also should be in that first composition. So 
I think this part of the roof can be put in the first comb as well. Reduce the mask so that it doesn't cover the first house. Okay, now the next one. And this layer goes to projection scene 2. And also those sidewalls. Okay, let's see. Great, can move on. The back side of the roof also goes to projection scene too. The log goes to projection scene one. And the back wheel of the card goes to the second projection scene. Move this house and the well to the third composition. All right, so we need to go to the composition of that house and reduce the mask of the sidewall. Cool. Now let's close this composition and let's get to the next one. Select and group all parts of the third house on the right. Then move them to projection scene 3. Let's check it. This one we move to the second projection scene. Let's check again. It looks like we need to reduce the mask so that it doesn't cover the wall of the house. No. Let's reduce it like this. Okay, great. Let's move on to the next one. So move all those houses on the right side to projection scene 4. Let's see. Select all parts of this house and group them. Then move those to projection scene 4. And also these two. Now we should put the corpse to projection scene 1. And the tree goes to projection scene 3. Well done! Now let's replace projection image of projection scene 5. Okay guys, the scene is complete. Now we need to create a beautiful camera animation. Now obviously our camera is already animated, but it's a temporary version. We just needed it to test the scenes. So we'll redo that now. Great, that's done. Now we can pre-render.
Whoops, looks like we made a mistake here. So to fix this, we need to move this layer from projection scene one to projection scene two. That's fine. So let's pre-render again. We're going to delete this object. It doesn't move right. And also, I'm going to reduce the duration. Right click and choose Trim Comp to Work area. All right, and now let's go ahead and make that corpse swing in the wind. Add key on the X rotation. But first, we should shorten the duration of the comp. Add key here and set the value to minus 10. And set it to 10 over here. Add key in the end of the comp and set it to minus 7. Select those keys, right click, go to Keyframe Assistant and choose Easy Ease. Right, let's see the result. Great, I like it. Now let's make it rain. Create a new solid. Go to Effect, Simulation, and choose CC Rainfall. Uncheck Composite with Original. Set amount of drops to about 10,000. Scene depth at 15,000. All right, let's see. Press zero. Okay, let's reduce the speed to 3000. We can also add some wind. Maybe you're about 100. Okay, cool. Now let's reduce the opacity. Perfect. Let's check it out. Something's wrong. Oh, that's right. We forgot to uncheck the solo. Okay, let's pre-render again. And I should also change the color of the rain. Let's enable full screen mode. Well done. We're gradually coming towards the final result. Now to make it look more realistic, we should add rain splashes on the ground. So double click here and import footage called splashes. Drag it to the timeline and change blend mode to add. Okay, let's see. Well, it looks like the brightness is too high. So we should reduce that opacity to 50. We also need to mask those places where we don't want those splashes. Now 
Now add key on the mask path, go to the end of the com and fix the mask. Now let's see how it looks. It looks good. I think we should reduce the amount of raindrops on the edges. Those drops falling behind houses should not be visible. So I guess we'll just draw a rectangular mask. Make it a solo layer to see it better. Then open Mask Feather and increase its value to about let's say 450. Okay, let's see. Looks great. Although we can add a little bit more feather. No, I think it looks okay now. All right, now let's get those ravens into the scene. So you just import the ravens footage and drag it to the timeline. Move it wherever you like, like here, for example. Let's see. Okay, this looks good. The scene is almost complete. We just need to add the lightning. Now we don't want to suffer, so let's keep it simple. So select projection scene five, go to effect, color correction, and choose exposure. Open effect parameters, master tab, hold alt and click that time indicator. Go ahead and type in exactly this. Random, open bracket, minus 0 0.25, comma, 0 0.25, close bracket. Okay, let's see. Now we can see the lighting, but it's continuous, and we don't want that. We need to make it flashy. So how do we do that? If we go to the effects menu, expression controls, select point control, and we just zero those values. Now select the first expression value, that is minus 0 0.25, then drag the pick whip to the first value of the point control. As you can see, we linked expression to the controller. So we can link the second value to the controller in exactly the same manner. Perfect. We now have control over our lightning. So now I'll enable time indicator. Press E to see that key in the timeline. Move the key over to 16 or 18 seconds. And then I'll move the indicator two seconds forward and set the starting point, minus 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. And then also the ending of the lightning. Zero values. And so now it has both the beginning and the end. So let's pre-render.
Well done, guys. Our scene is now totally ready. Actually, I think we can also sharpen it up a little bit. I'll set it to 10. Let's see again. Yep, difference pretty obvious. Okay, that's all guys. I hope this tutorial was useful for you. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time.